Earth has a lot of really cool stuff. Beautiful landscapes, fancy cars, cute animals, buildings, bacon, me and you. There's oceans and mountains and everything in between and over 7 billion humans. But while this is the Earth with Saturn, this is the Earth without Saturn. Now you might be saying, Saturn, what's some distant planet with rings? No, not that kind of rings, that kind of rings. What's it got to do with us here on Earth? Well, it turns out, before you and me, or anything on Earth, or even Earth itself was around, Saturn might have just been the first superhero. Everything in and on Earth is made up of chemicals, made up of molecules, made up of atoms, including you. Essentially, you're nothing more than a lot of little tiny pieces lumped together to form a human. However, that's only one possible arrangement of those pieces. Billions of years ago, all your bits and all the bits in the entire solar system were in a giant cloud of gas and dust floating in space. Eventually, that cloud began to collapse, forming a disk and rotating around a central mass that would become the sun. This kind of disk is called a protoplanetary disk. Protoplanetary disks are where planets form. Proto means first or earliest form of, planetary means pertaining to planets, and disks mean disks. Sort of like frisbees, but a lot bigger and full of tons of particles of gas and dust whizzing around and colliding with each other. When these collisions happen, the particles can either stick together or blast each other apart. Over time, these collisions add up, with particles forming planetesimals, objects that are larger than particles but smaller than planets, and planetesimals form planetary embryos objects larger than planetesimals, but still not planets. After a long time, these actions lead to the formation of a solar system with planets orbiting around a central star. This process is well understood in the abstract and is integral in our model of planetary formation. However, there are some holes in it when it's applied to our own solar system. When scientists run simulations on the formation of our solar system, Mars is a lot bigger than it is in real life. Also, the asteroid belt, the region in between Mars and Jupiter, where over a million asteroids and other rocky objects call home, has a much different composition and orbital characteristics than simulations expect. These issues withstood decades of scientific efforts to resolve them, until recently, just within the past 10 years, a new groundbreaking hypothesis was suggested. What makes it so new and so groundbreaking is that it proposes that Jupiter traveled almost 300 million kilometers in towards the Sun, only to be caught up in a resonance with Saturn and head back outwards almost twice that distance. Crazy, right? Well, maybe not as crazy as it first might seem. The mechanisms that could lead to this happening have been around for a long time. The key physics that describes how a planet like Jupiter could migrate great distances is angular momentum, which is a quantity that describes how something rotates. Planets orbiting, like anything rotating, have angular momentum. And an important facet of angular momentum is that when mass is closer to the axis of rotation, you need less of a push for it to spin. Figure skaters use this fact to speed up or slow down their spins by pulling in or putting out their arms. When a planet like Jupiter is orbiting in a protoplanetary disk, its gravity affects the material around it, causing that material to be scattered and pushed away. In a closed system, like a protoplanetary disk, angular momentum cannot be lost or gained. So, when the material on the outer part of the disk, relative to Jupiter, is scattered outwards, Jupiter has to move inwards to conserve angular momentum. And it turns out, when planets get big enough, these sort of movements are routine. When astronomers look at solar systems other than our own, they find that half of sun-like stars have planets at least the size of Jupiter orbiting very close, oftentimes closer than Mercury orbits the Sun. But distances in space are still big. Like, really big. In astronomy and astrophysics, distances are measured in AU, astronomical units. An AU is the distance between the Sun and the Earth, and Jupiter formed at about 3.5 AU. Time scales are also really big in space. It took about 2.5 million years for Jupiter to form, but only 100,000 years for it to migrate into 1.5 AU. That distance is just 75 million kilometers from where Earth would form, which in astronomical terms is pretty close. If nothing had happened, Jupiter would have plowed through all the material that would have become you and everything you've ever known. But fear not, thankfully for all of us, this is where Saturn comes in. See, while Jupiter had been migrating in towards the Sun, so had Saturn. Except, 
Saturn had been going a lot faster because it wasn't as big as Jupiter and caught up with it. When it did, just in the nick of time for Earth, the two gas giants entered into an orbital resonance. This resonance caused the angular momentum exchange that had been pushing the two planets inwards to reverse, sending them back out away from the Sun. The passage of such massive planets through the disk disrupted a lot. Jupiter and Saturn are the two largest things in the solar system, next to the Sun after all. Their gravitational influences were able to transport objects over large distances, and they scattered particles, planetesimals, and planetary embryos alike. See, the problem that scientists were having with simulating the composition of the asteroid belt was that they could only get it to form from stuff in the near vicinity. In reality, the asteroid belt is made up of material from all over. But once they included the migration of Jupiter and Saturn, their effects deposited the right stuff in the right places. Huzzah! What's more, with Jupiter turning around at 1.5 AU, the inner disk became truncated in just the right spot. That disk, full of material that hadn't been scattered by Jupiter, would then, through collisions, form the four inner planets, this time all with correct sizes. Mars problem? Solved. But there's something else, maybe even more intriguing, lying amongst all this. For every one of those outer disk objects, that was scattered into the asteroid belt, many more were flung into the region where Earth would form. Those objects probably contained water ice, which can only form further away from the Sun. So, Jupiter and Saturn might just be the reason that we have water on Earth. And without water, life as we know it now could never have happened. Astrophysics is complicated. It involves absolutely gigantic things moving over massive distances on timescales that make human life look insignificant. But when physicists really delve into the science of space, they tend to find out some truly spectacular things. If Jupiter migrated in towards the Sun, when the rest of the solar system was just dust and gas, and then Saturn comes in and the two head back outwards, that answers a lot of questions we've had about how the solar system formed. But What's truly remarkable about it all is that, at the base of it, we just got lucky. Like I said before, we've seen plenty of solar systems out there, with gas giants orbiting right up next to the star. Solar systems like that could probably have never formed a planet like Earth. We may think superheroes like the Avengers and Batman are cool, what with their super strength, nifty gadgets, and spiffy costumes. But billions of years ago, when we were all just bits and pieces floating in space, Saturn swooped in and saved the world. Thanks for watching.